Once the deliveries arrive at a Sydney warehouse, they are stacked inside a refrigerator where on this day, Raymond Ho inspected the contents. This is normally how China receives it. Meat is the prized commodity here, which for years was butchered, then sold domestically to hundreds of Sydney restaurants. When Ho joined the company, he brought his experience of exporting produce and an idea. A lot of friends and families from China was asking for beef at that time. That was before the free trade agreement. Um, and the information that we get is uh, there's not enough beef in China. Now a growing percentage of the business is focused on meeting a section of China's demand. Especially the growing taste for premium Australian beef among China's rising middle class. A lot of them are out there are, are quite wealthy. So they are looking for healthier options, they are looking for better options. Uh, and they don't mind to pay for it. An increasing number of Australian agricultural companies are taking advantage of the country's clean and green reputation in China. Exports to China have become an integral part of many businesses which are having a huge impact on the industry. If you look at salmon exports from Tasmania, between 2012 and 2016, they grew from just under $3 million per year to $45 million. That's a big number. The goal of meeting China's growing food markets has increased Chinese investment in Australian agribusinesses, which totaled 1.2 billion Australian dollars in 2016. That same year, Chinese company Moon Lake bought Australia's largest dairy firm, VDL Farms. Now the company plans to export directly from Tasmania to China, a move that will ultimately benefit other Tasmanian companies. China has a, you know, 850 middle class people coming on the market by 2030 and they need, they need the food, they need food security. But experts point out that it is impossible for a country with less than 25 million people to meet all of the food needs of China's more than 1.3 billion people. Our former trade minister, Andrew Robb, said that it was rubbish to ever even imagine that Australia could become the food bowl of Asia, uh, but it certainly could become the delicatessen of Asia, so really targeting those high value added um, outputs. For Australia, that means targeting a relatively small but growing slice of China's demand, the premium food market. One of the biggest challenges is the increasing competition for China's business from other countries, including the United States. China recently lifted a 14-year ban on premium beef exports from the U.S. Experts say that means smaller countries, such as Australia, will have to work harder and better educate Chinese consumers. To actually help them to figure out what, what they want, and what will best suit the demands. That also means Australia's agribusinesses need to ensure what they export meets that demand. That's one of the worries with trying to meet some of the China demand, uh, and I haven't seen it, but I, and I hope it doesn't happen, that we actually start exporting some of the second grade products. While Australian agricultural businesses are focused on meeting China's specific needs, some Australian researchers are working toward the bigger picture of global food security. Associate Professor Ula Gnome is part of a team of researchers at the University of Western Sydney's Hawkesbury Institute for the Environment. Their work includes studying how plants turn sunlight into energy to increase the yield of some of the world's most popular crops, such as wheat and rice. We need about 70% increase in crop productivity from uh, where we are now to uh, sustainably feed uh, uh, the future population. The world's population is projected to reach 9.7 billion people by the year 2050. Experts say Australia's agriculture industry is still in its infancy when it comes to meeting some of China's food demands. And many companies are just beginning to realize the economic potential. There will be more people who want, want Australian meat and there will, there will more people who want Australian lamb. And Raymond Ho says he sees no reason why that demand won't continue to grow. Greg Navarro, CGTN, Sydney.